Okay, I'm going to take my gloves off now, roll up my sleeves or whatever analogy you prefer, and we'll get into talking about samples. Uh, Regen, as opposed to some of the other, other earlier iterations of the Synclavier, is really kind of sam focused on samples. Um, it takes it to, to the next level, what you can do with the samples on here. So I'm going to try to cover as many things as I can remember off the top of my head, and hopefully some of this will be useful for you. Start with a, a blank slate and cut everything. Erase, confirm erase. You can check the erase options here and uh, you can um, set a default. So if we set a stack, that just sets all of the tracks to. <laughs> I'm already, uh, I'm already digressing talking about tracks, but anyway, it sets, um, it sets it to a stack where they all listen to all MIDI so we can stack our sounds on our tracks. Or we can set it to a split that splits defaults to C4. Anyway, we're going to just erase um, pretty much standard confirm erase. That's another way of doing it. Otherwise, what you saw me do there. Right, blank slate. Let's start with track one, timbre one, and partial one. So I can call up, I can look at, here are the different um, things. First of all, I can listen to the different samples. You can load your own samples under user. And that's that's something that's gonna everything's gonna apply exactly the same. But I'm just gonna go through some of the presets. You can see how long some of these presets are. So that's an evolving texture type thing, whereas Vibra Pad is oh, simply sound. So that's not not a bad one. We can start with. Let's load that one up. So if I press Doink, the Enter button, what that's doing is giving me a fresh timbre in track one with just that sample on it. Now, that's Vibrapad and it's called itself Vibrapad, but there's only one partial. Now I could go to partial two and I could add another sample on partial two. So on the keyboard, that's Vibrapad. Let's find another one to add. That's different, but the same, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's Right, let's add this one and then we can clearly hear the two different sounds but they should hopefully blend. Now if I press enter that's going to do the same thing. That's going to create a new timbre, deleting the current one and just putting um, the production line sample on partial one. We don't want to do that so we want to choose which partial and we'll put that on partial two then we press our enter. So now on partial one and it says partial one merged but partial one we have the Viva slap whatever it was called, and then on this one we have the production line. If I go back to her list, there we go, production line. So together they sound like that. So if I want to confirm, well, what have I got? If I go to edit tool, first of all, I've now gone into, uh, or it's put me into the samples mode. I can change this back to Added here, there's my sine wave, but it still remembers what sample I've got. I'm going to go back to sample. So, Vibra pad here, uh, production line there. So, there was two methods of how to call up samples. One, you just have a sample really quickly to the timbre that you're working with, and another way is you're picking a particular partial to put it on. And we've got 12 partials to choose from. Now what we can do is we can use the partial crossfader and we can change these so that I don't know, I'll do it by velocity but again you can well no I'll do it, let's do it by MIDI uh, wheel MIDI wheel let's do it by mod wheel let's do it by MIDI wheel okay so the default is that um, well, the default is that the whole mod wheel sounds that partial but if I made that vibra slap only sound at the lower end, I could change that. You can see what's happening now. So now if I change my mod wheel position, and you can see that's the green line. Oh, I'm, I actually changed it for partial two, which is called production line, but anyway. That's all well and good, but not very useful. 
So what I might want to do is change the fading on that. So now what I get is this kind of, um, yeah, let's change the fading. I actually pressed it twice. So if I, if I arm it, again, I can move my mod wheel position. That's where it's going to change the fading. Not so useful as changing the low and high values, really. So there's a nice fading. So now what I can do is play a note and... And you can see how that's maybe a little bit better for performance. I can take that down to there. Get to that uh, uh, An area that I'm happy with with my mod wheel. And I can do that for, as I say, velocity, pressure or a, a particular MIDI CC that I want to dial in. So that is the crossfader. So as you can imagine, once you build up 12 and they're doing various different things, you can have something that's quite useful for performance, but you can also have complex sounds that are useful for sound design. So another way you want, might want to combine more than one partial is it have a delay on it. So um, I can default this back to normal, normal and we're hearing both at once. So now let's look at changing the envelope of that. Which one is it now? Let's change the envelope of that production one so that it comes in a little bit later. So I can put a delay on it. That's good. So say I exaggerate that. Half a second. Okay, so now when it comes in. Or I can just make it fade in gradually with an attack. About the same half a second. See what that sounds like. Uh, yep. Yeah. Now I can change the way it decays. I'm just changing this one partial that's selected. And I want to change the uh, decay adjust. Or the size of the case shape. You'll see that changes how extremely that tails off. So that's how many dB that, that logarithm function is, or exp well, exponential is this actually. It's simply due to the def default exponential, that's a logarithmic curve. So there's different ways of combining samples, and you can play with those uh, envelopes. Um, another use of sample is to map them to different keys so rather than go through that i think what i'll do is i'll show you uh on a region i'll show you the uh, monster drum track for instance somewhere here monster percussion track calling that up deleted those other two partials and it's put the monster drum pack there now what we have is eight partials of drums now pretty much every key, every key that's de defined for the general MIDI drums has got a drum sound on it. So how is it done that with only eight partials? There's more than eight sounds. It's used a patch list. So still on samples mode and we go into edit and this is partial five, this is one. They're grouped typically so these ones are grouped, the, the kick drums on partial two and that way, if I want to change just the kick volumes, I can change change that. They all default to maximum, but they've been blended already, I think, in the samples. But yeah, I want to reduce the, the sound of toms or kicks or different groups. I can do it on a partial basis. And then what we know about, what, what do we know about this kick drum, for instance, all right, this bass drum? So if I go define, and I go to, uh, well, it says B1 to B1, that's the range. So I've defined the range of this, and I'm okay, I'm gonna have to find it there on my keyboard. Okay, so that's the bass drum. Now I'll put the volume back up on that one. Okay, nice. I'll go back to define. So I could uh, change that to be um, a different key by doing, by arming them, like that, green, well, if I arm that one, 
There we go. A1, I've gone down a key. So B1's not doing anything. You can see kind of A sharp one it is. Or I could uh, change it to, I could arm that and make it a whole octave. You hear in the bass drum with the other, some of the other samples as well now. Well, some of the other samples. <laughs> Actually, you're not, are you? Because I've soloed it, but there you go. You would hear the kick there, across the whole octave. And um, that's pretty much it. If, there, if there's a conflicting sample where you're hearing more than one sample on one partial, like we are in this case, it's going to just sound the first one. So you can only play, or you can only sound one partial, one uh, sample per partial. So, we go back to define. And I've changed um, the range to include that C2 key, so, uh, that uh, second bass drum. So, so if I go here, that one is uh, up to A2, and then this guy is C2. So let's push him along. It doesn't matter really what we do, because we're not going to save this. Okay, that's edit. We're not conflicting the samples again. You can see the range here of the first one in a slightly different red, and then the range of the second one. This is better when you get when you get more of them you see the different colours. So we can keep adding. Uh, I can go down and then choose another file. Uh, there's our production line again. Let's do uh, the baby laughing. Uh, let's do the tongue drum one. Oh, drum drone. Okay. So then when I'm pressing that this was flashing to show you. I'm just going to add one. I'm not going to replace them all but I'm just adding one to this list. So um, if you add it by default, it's going to choose a range for you, but you could set a range yourself. So I can press keys now. You see the green line is armed, and the range is changed as I press a key, but I can press two keys at once, and it gives me a range. Well, that's the range I want. Perfect. Now I call it up. That drum drone is on that range. And again, I've got conflicting samples there, but you get the idea. So let's change the range of that here to be this. Okay. What are the samples sounding there? There's the drum drum. Let's see where it's done. Now I can use the load sound here to go up and down when when I've got a patch list, which is useful then when I'm in the roots looking at the ranges or Perhaps I'm looking at the, the pitches or something. So I've got blue to go back, and then I'll look at the pitches. And I want to check, oh, my pitch is correct. I can go up, and I'm changing this with my load sound. And that shows me what pitches I want. For example, and I can also add looping information here. But as soon as I come out of looking at the patch this that's going to load a different just be aware of that that's going to load a different uh, sound so let's find uh, a really simple one simple stab what okay let's call that one up one partial on one track hold up to the keyboard let's analyze that now I could auto tune it and if it were my own sample from an SD card I'd probably be advised to do that but the factory ones are all tuned. Now I'll go next on analyze. I can pick how many frames I want. Defaults to 20, let's add a few more. The more frames typically, the more realistic the resynthesized sound's gonna be. Um, a hybrid attack is where it keeps some of the attack of the sample, and then that blends into uh, the additive resynthesized sound. Now, if you want something that's just purely resynthesized, just take that off, but Sometimes you, you, you're actually resynthesizing something because you want to loop it more, off, more often and you want to keep the original attack and, and blend to that one, in which case you would, you would add so many milliseconds of attack, depending on how many milliseconds there are on the sample. I'm going to take that off and then da 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 da, analyze. Sample pitch cannot be analyzed. Okay, so this one has got too complex a pitch, or a harmonic content, or it's too long to be analyze successfully so the engine doesn't think it will good do a good job of that so you may as well keep that as a sample so let's find another one that, that maybe it will have um, better luck with it actually a lot of these ones are by their nature quite complicated in this 
in this library so let's change to a different library um, if you go down to the bottom there's selected legacy samples so these are a lot of the original LED samples that have been provided for you well all the all the good ones anyway from the NED days that have been sampled at 50 kilohertz um, most of them I think so I'm going to select the samples in here and I'm sure we'll find a candidate that we like oh that's pretty clear let's try resynthesizing that one so we go back up to wave go to analyze well, we're not going to tune it and we're going to take the hybrid attack off boom it's analyzed So it's analysed that sample into the keyboard. As you can see, it's created this complicated set of harmonics now. So now we're on additive. And we can change it now if we wish. Just sort of, you know. Change the way it sounds. But not only has it uh, analyzed the harmonics is analyzed over time so now we have frames so that's actually just soloing the first frame when we edit that just carry frame zero if we go to our frames button there's actually 19 frames in this particular resynthesized sound and they're all sort of stacked in 3d on on, on each other so um, we can change the frames and you'll see how they, how they how the harmonic content changes over time and that's how we're achieving that resynthesized sound now if you thought well I actually think that's pretty good but if you thought well that's not quite as realistic as I wanted we could go back to analyze again it's going to remember the sample that was in there and then next and this time we just add a tiny little bit of attack not even that 100 milliseconds bang so now it's saying hybrid because it's playing the sample but then it's moving to the additive stuff so if I want to look at the additive content it's different so many frames in and I can still play with those frames and there's still 20 frames because that's only we selected but now we have the sample to start with if I wanted to reduce that hybrid I'd have to go through that process again Now I can do things like loop the sound and it's going to be easier than trying to find a loop point on a sample. And I would do that again from the frames button. So change splice, change blah blah blah, change volume and mod. That's things you can operate on different frames and um, there's different delay and frame settings. If I go, I think it's left, I can go into the loop mode. So I can loop is there either a ping pong loop or a loop straight through? I'll pull that back down a bit and I'll change that. Probably not the best candidate to loop because the volume's also drops by the end of that. So I can boost up that volume. Or I can let's just go back and you get the idea there. Still sounds a little bit jerky. And you can change the cross phrase on the frames to make that quite easily blend more. And easier than if you were trying to loop a sample. And it certainly doesn't sound glitchy. That's resynthesis. <laughs> okay, thanks for watching.